there's been a feature of Captivate 5 that has sort of floated under the radar. Uh, it's this checkbox in the publish settings that says enable SWF conversion to iPhone application. By checking this box, it sort of sets up the SWF so that it can be packaged with the iPhone packager uh, that was shipped with Flash CS5. This was uh, some tooling that was built into Flash CS5 to allow you to actually make native iPhone and iPad applications. The problem with this feature in Captivate 5 is that it doesn't actually make the app, the iPhone app, for you. You still have to do so, a little bit of work to make this happen. I wanted to take a minute here and kind of show this process. It isn't well documented in the help files, nor is there a lot on the web showing how this works. Uh, as I said, the setup process is a little bit labor intensive, but once you have it set up, it's actually really easy to use Captivate to make iPad applications. They're not the most optimized, but they do the trick, and for someone who's a non-developer and doesn't want to learn a programming language, this would be a viable option for this. I'm going to hit publish here in my project. This is just a client file that I made a, a little while ago, kind of stripped out some of the branding uh, and a lot of the slides, so it's not going to make a lot of sense. But what I really wanted to do was show you that I could take an existing file, one that I haven't done anything with related to mobile, and, and publish it directly to an iPad. So let me view the output here just so you kind of get an idea of what this is all about. You can see, it's a basic Captivate file. Uh, I've got a play bar in here. I can sort of pa fast forward through some of these slides. It also has some quiz questions associated with it. Uh, I don't really remember. Well, I guess I got it right there. That's good. Uh, moving on to the next one, I think it was B. Get that right as well. Uh, and you can see I passed the quiz here. Now before we move on to the setup process, there's one other file you need to include with your SWF before you can publish it. It's called a descriptor file, and it basically tells the device the name of the application, if it can be rotated on screen, uh, what version it is. It's an XML file, and I've copied and pasted this XML file from my Flash installation, the templates that come with it. I'm going to post this file to the blog post uh, that I make after I make this video, just grabbing this video and also giving some resources for it. So you can just download this XML file from there. All you need to do with this XML file is give your application an ID. We normally use a reverse domain notation for this. This can, ID can be anything, it's just something that needs to make your application unique. When you create your Apple developer account, which I'll talk about next, you will have to put in this unique ID and they will talk about what that needs to be when you do that. The file name, this is what it's going to create when it makes the IPA file. I'm going to call this invoice training, the name invoice training. You need to indicate what the SWF is. There's also some other settings for, again, what kind of system Chrome, which doesn't really apply to our mobile development, uh, what the aspect ratio or how it's going to start, uh, if it's full screen or not, um, if it auto-orients. In other words, when you rotate the device, does it turn as well? You can set some of those settings in here. We're not going to worry too much about those. I'm going to keep this saved, and that's all I need. So those two files are what you need. Now we need to get our computer set up to package this file. In order to get this into a uh, iOS device, like an iPhone or an iPad, the first thing that you need to do is actually sign up for the uh, iOS developer program through Apple. On our blog, blog.easelsolutions.com, I recently put up a blog post about this process, so April 27th, you can see its date visiting this at a later date, you uh, uh, might have to scroll down or go page over a couple pages to find it. Now I don't go through this process step by step, but I give you all the resources you need. The Flash CS5 help files actually take you through this whole process. Lee Brimlow on his Go to and Learn blog also has a couple of good videos taking you through the whole process. So you need to go through the entire setup process for the iOS developer program. After you do, you will get two files. You will have a P12 file, which is a, essentially a key that you'll be using to sign the application. You will also have a mobile provisioned file, which you've downloaded from your developer account, and this basically lets you install applications manually on different devices. So these two files are going to be necessary to do the signing, and you just need to remember where you've saved those two. 
From there, you can move on to actually packaging the SWF as an iPhone application. As I said, this is not the smoothest process. This can only really be done through the command line, and in order to do so, you need the iPhone Packager for Flash. Again, the iPhone Packager for Flash is actually in Adobe Flash CS5. And really, if you download Adobe Flash CS5, you just need to make sure you've run all your updates in order to have the, 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 the most recent version of it. You can still go to labs.adobe.com and manually download this. Um, I've got Flash already installed on my machine, so I don't need to download this. What I need to do is go to the directory where this is installed, and it's a PFI folder in your Flash installation. So I'm going to navigate to that directory, it's in the Adobe directory, Adobe Flash, and there's this PFI directory. Now in this directory, you're going to go into the bin directory, and you'll see pfi.bat. This is essentially the, the, the file that Flash uses when it's packaging an iOS application. You need to run this bat file from the command line with your SWF. And again, this is not the most streamlined process right now. In the future, we will hopefully have a little bit better uh, way of doing this in Captivate natively. So I'm going to open a command prompt here. Uh, on Windows, you can actually hold the shift key, right click, and say open command window here. Uh, if you don't, you need to actually open a command prompt and change directories all the way down to this location. What we're going to do is we are going to type in a command uh, in order to package our file. Now there's one thing to note, if you're running a 64-bit version of Windows, this bat file has a hard time communicating with the version of Java that it needs, the 32-bit version uh, that it needs to run. So what I actually have to do is I have to duplicate this file. So I'm going to copy it and just repaste it here. I'm just going to call it PFI2. Now the reason I'm doing this, again, is because I have a 64-bit version of Windows and I don't want to edit the original. I don't want to mess up how Flash works on my computer. Um, that's why I'm making a second version of this. Next, I need to open that up. I'm going to use Notepad to edit this file. Now again, if you're on Windows 7, when you open Notepad, you're going to need to open it in uh, administrative mode. So you need to right click on it and say run as administrator because you're editing a file that is in a secure area. So I'm going to open this file up. I now need to just replace exactly what's written here with this line. Now, you can pause the video and type all of this in. Um, I will also be adding this to our blog uh, shortly after I post the video, so you should be able to copy and paste it from here. This is just essentially making, pointing uh, this file at which version of Java it needs to use, because it needs to use the 32-bit version of Java. Again, you don't have a 64-bit computer, you could skip this entire step, and you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to save this file, close it, and go back to my command line. So now is the part where I need to execute this command line statement to make this happen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here PFI2. Now again, if you didn't have to do that extra step, you can just type in PFI, because that's what you want to run. Hyphen package, hyphen target, IPA, hyphen app, hyphen store, hyphen provisioning, you're going to point it at that provisioning file. Now again, this is that file that I showed you a little bit earlier that you needed to download. I'm going to put in the full path for it to save some time here. I have it copy and pasteable. So that's where I had to put that file. Next up, hyphen store type pkcs12 hyphen key store. So some more gobbledygook there. Now the path to that P12 file. I've got that in here. I need to type in store pass. Then you're going to type in your password that you put in when you created that P12 file. Again, through those steps from our blog that I showed you earlier. I am not going to type in my password here. I'm just going to leave it as the word password. Finally, I need to talk a little bit about the output. I need to include 
the IPA file that I want to create. Onto my desktop, I'm just going to save an invoice training.ipa file. I'm going to also include the path to the XML file, that was that descriptor file, and the path to the SWF I want to package. I need to update this path just a bit because this was oops, on my desktop in a Captivate folder and a Publish folder. And I had called this file invoice hyphen app. Following this statement, put a hyphen capital C and the file to compile, which would be the SWF file. Now notice there's actually two separate statements here. The first part after the hyphen C is the location of the SWF file. You put a space and then you put the SWF file you would like to compile. Now again, super ugly. Uh, I will have this line be copy and pasteable from the blog post as well uh, with just placeholders for the different uh, areas that you need to fill out like the password and the locations but uh, this is the only way to make this happen right now we need to convert this SWF to a iPhone or iPad application so I'm gonna hit enter and run this right before I do I'm gonna update my password now as you probably noticed this process could take quite a little bit of time to package that IPA file, but I ended up with an iPhone or iPad application. I think it took about seven minutes for mine to compile here, and it's, it's not all that big. It's a six meg file, but, but again, the process isn't quite optimized yet. It's getting better. This is it. I've got a file that I can now put onto an iPhone or iPad. I am going to plug in my iPad right now and try this out. Now iTunes is going to help with this process. I will take my IPA file, just drag it right into iTunes. It's then added to my list of options, and I'm going to hit, you can see I've got a couple of them there because I've done this before and didn't have my IDs match up quite right, but that's okay. I'm going to go to my apps, I'm going to hit apply, and what I should see now is this syncing onto the iPad pop open a webcam here. Now I apologize I don't have my stand with me so slight case of shaky camera but you can see I've got an invoice training icon right here. If I click that it will start up. You can see I can hit the, the next button. Seek, the seek through, seek through. I'm kind of just pumping through here get to my quiz. Oh, was it C maybe? Ooh, yeah, it was. Nice. And then move forward again. Question 2, B. Beautiful. I won. As you can see, this process has plenty of room for improvement, but I think it's pretty cool that I can build a file in Captivate 5 and publish it directly to an iPad. Uh, it extends the reach for non-developers for them to be able to build mobile content and mobile versions. It doesn't have to be an e-learning course. It can be an application where you have buttons and navigation built into your Captivate file. Uh, it might not be the sexiest application, but it is a way to start extending that reach. To recap, you need to sign up for the developer program with Apple, get your provisioning profile, certificate and the P12 certificate created. Use the blog post that I showed you in the video to take you through the steps to do that. After that, you need to have the iPhone packager, which you already have if you have Flash CS5. If not, you need to download it, pop open a command line, and run that command line that you can download from the blog. If you've got a 64-bit computer, you have to do that extra step of editing that bat file, but for people without a 64-bit computer, you can just use the bat pile file that's there. Once you have that IPA file, you drag it into iTunes and sync it to your connected device. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a start here and uh, you have some success building applications with Captivate 5.